There he is. Oh my goodness me. I didn't think the reporter would let me off. Wow. <laughs> All right, folks, we are actually on, folks. <laughs> hey, Bob. So welcome to this webinar. Thanks for joining us. We are with uh, Danielle Samella, that's who you see. Hello. The female version of this group. And Dr. <laughs> Robert Pick is the other male version of this group. So um, thanks for joining us, which will, with what we hope will be an exciting and uh, and uh, maybe not earth-shattering webinar, but certainly there are some things, some developments. For those of you who saw us last week, uh, you know that um, um, uh, we talked about some of the things we've implemented. There are more things we've implemented. Bob's here because we haven't had heard, heard Bob's perspective yet, so we'll talk about all of that. And of course, you can ask your questions. Just go to the Q&A box, which is on the bottom of the screen for most of you, and just ask your questions. As we go along, we'll carry this webinar on for, um, oh, for probably 45 minutes or so. Um, so just ask your questions uh, when it's appropriate. I'll ask the questions probably at the end. Uh, tomorrow, the AAP is having a webinar. We're going to host that one for them. Uh, so Danielle and I will be on there along with um, Brian France and Chris Richardson, uh, President and Vice President of the AAP. They're going to talk about uh, AAP tools, AAP tools that uh, we can implement. And uh, Danielle and I will talk about whatever tools we implement too. So uh, um, <laughs> if you're on this webinar, uh, come tomorrow because the AAP is doing an awful lot of things to be able to help us. Uh, to be able to weather this storm. So with that, uh, Bob, you're you're an ADA spokesman, are you? Yes, I have. Uh, I've been honored to be a spokesperson for 32 years, but I can't be that old, and uh, especially at 39. And uh, but as, as some of you know, I was <laughs> and uh, in 1983 and a half, I've always taught a day a week. I pioneered lasers in our specialty and in dentistry, and I was the only one with the subject knowledge, so I became a spokesperson. And I left lasers a long time ago in 1998, and it doesn't stop. And uh, for various reasons, lasers are great when used ethically, uh, but I left, uh, still use them at least six, seven times a week. But over time, I simply became a spokesperson for dental implants and emergencies. and emergencies. Uh, COVID-19 is unprecedented in history. A uh, hundred years from now, people will look back uh, at what we went through, no different than the Great Depression. But uh, just as a quick aside, on a really positive note, uh, Lee, what you're doing, what others are doing, I'm doing, are off the charts. And we have something that didn't exist five years ago during the Depression, World War II, Vietnam era. I was in the draft. Um, and that's right here, social media. What yeah. we're doing, instant connection. It's huge, and you have to, especially now, you know, I got labeled the purple cow, purple cow wow guy about three years ago. This is your chance to elevate and come out of this bigger, stronger, better, richer than ever before as a specialist okay so let's talk about some of the strategies that you're using right now we're using social media and uh, you know we'll talk about what we're doing too and uh, let's get into a discussion so what are you doing right now to be able to uh, project yourself put yourself out in front and so that when you're when we're recovering we're really recovering oh wow we'll be here till four in the morning but that's okay <laughs> well, <laughs> we're looking for the I, I, I think there's you gotta <laughs> you gotta lay off in these unprecedented times and but to begin, I came up with a mnemonic that everybody's got to live by. You got to set sock. You got to be calm, educated, vigilant, supported with love, organized and communicative. And communicative is what we're doing right now. And communicative is going to help you. Here's what I think should be done. Uh, first off, um, just going backwards for a second, you know, never thought, uh, Lee, it just for those of you that don't me or don't know Lee, we communicate all the time. Uh, Lee is still ahead of me on a lot of stuff. Uh, twice a year we do the Pick Business Team Building Retreat. We'll get to that a little bit later. Maybe I brought Lee in uh, live via social media to talk to my team because we're changing rapidly. I like leading the curve like Lee. Here's what you have to do today because I guarantee 
98% of specialists are not going to do, and I'm not perfect, but what I'm, what I'm going to talk about, you got to use social media to your advantage. So one, I have an article coming up in dentistry today about the power of video. Video engages an individual 12 to 1500 times greater than text. When surveys were done, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies will prefer to listen to a quick video than text. So imitate those that are successful and do it better. Yep. You should be going first off for the gray hair specialist. A lot of you, ladies and gentlemen, do not have a social media presence. You got to get it right now if you don't have it. Uh, I think Lee would agree with me. I, I, I'm astounded at the number of gray-haired specialists that don't have websites. You got to have it. You got to have your social media presence, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Twice a week, I go on live on my office Facebook page. And I used to go once a week on Thursday, information, that sort of stuff. Um, again, a quick sidetrack, which is huge. If you don't have it, you need a person on your team called what I call the O-R-E, office rep extraordinaire. Somebody that does it in a purple cow wow way. And purple cow, by the way, Here's my purple cow with the Harvard, <laughs> okay? Harvard Business School. And uh, that's good. <laughs> purple cow means being remarkable in an ethical, amazing way to stick out from the crowd. Yeah. The office rep extraordinaire is the person that does your social media. It's the person that goes to senior homes, goes to schools, gets you the opportunities. Please delegate. Dentists sometimes tend to be control freaks. Delegate to the right people. Jeff Bezos is not on the factory line putting things in boxes. He's coordinating. No different than Lee or me. It just is what it is. Danielle leads and coordinates. So you got to have the ORE. But in these unprecedented times, you've got to be doing unprecedented things. You should be going on live two or three times a week on your social media site. Do it on Facebook, and then you can link it, your social media coordinator links it to Instagram and Twitter. Hey, everybody. It's, you know, it's Dr. It's Dr. Joe Gums, and I'm just here with a quick update. Uh, this is unprecedented times with COVID-19. We're here for emergencies. We're here for you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But come on, because when they see your face, that is so important. And another thing you got to do. I sent a video, uh, what is today? Today's Thursday, Thursday on Thursday. Monday to uh, between Saturday and Monday. I have the cell phone of most of my referring dentists. I sent a short 55 second video. You know, after a minute, some uh, uh, carriers won't take a, a video longer than a minute. I sent them a quick video from right here in my home office. Uh, I didn't have the Purple Cow Wow shirt on. I had my office logo on. But I said, you know, uh, it's an example. Hey, Paul, it's Bob Pick. I just wanted to reach out and touch base with you in this unprecedented time. And we are here for you 24-7. I am here for you for any emergencies that you're afraid to handle, major swellings, fistulas, escalating pain. I'm also here for you for any problems you may be having with the team, uh, your, you know, things that are going on, how to handle your mortgage. I, I got the answers. I'm here for you. Please reach out to me. And the response has been off the charts. And let me tell you, when you come back to work, hopefully those referring dentists are going to think of you first before another referring dentist. And your fer referrals are going to go this way with afterburners. It's called leading in difficult times, stepping to the plate and being different than anybody else in a great way. Lee's done it. I like doing it. Others like doing it. It's key. Use this shitty time to do something better so you come out cranking it, cranking it. And 
I am on a roll here. Something else which is huge. You have to be in touch with your team. I'm amazed. A, a, a dentist called me up and said, oh God, I didn't even think about that. I haven't talked to my team. I know somebody texted, they had to go on unemployment. Do a Zoom conference with your team. We have, if I can find it really quick, something that I think is so key is we have a group text in the office where we send out group information and it, it looks something like this. There's all the team members, it's a group text. I did a fun thing the other day, whose baby picture is that? First one to come up with the right answer gets an Amazon gift card. I've been sending out videos to my team. Please don't worry. I'm here for you, I care. We're all gonna be fine, I'm here to take care of you. We have reserves, uh, we're gonna do great. And as a final comment to this thing, something I think that also is going to be huge that will separate you uh, from the competition when you come back. And that's key, that's key. Because let's face it, um, I hope this isn't gonna offend anybody. When I lectured at the AP meeting, I just none of us had enough time for management. So important today. I said to the room, has anybody ever, has anybody seen a change in referral patterns or just me? Every hand went up in two seconds. You got GPs taking implant courses. I took a weekend course and uh, I pushed the implant in the sinus. Can you take it out for me at no charge and tell the patient that I'm great? This happened to me this year. Come on. And would you go to an orthopedic surgeon? Would you go to an internist that took a weekend course and easy knee replacement for the internist and, you know, had a two for one special? What goes on is unreal. And if you don't step ahead with the referrals, you know, my patterns have changed. I, I, like Lee, I get 60 to 70% of my referrals today do not come from my referral teams. Our goal is to become independent. I want that to be frosting on the cake from them. Mm -hmm. We get them from social media, senior homes, uh, patient, patient. So important to talk to patients. But here's another big, put this one on your website when you come back. I've already designated one of my team members, you know, as, as Kristen is my ORE, office rep extraordinaire. That's her job full time. She's not in the office except when she comes in to update us. But I came up with a position called the ICC, Infection Control Coordinator. Mm -hmm. And we're going to let our website know that we have an ICC. And I'm going to do a video thing. Our video crew is going to come in and interview Claudia. And to tell us what you do is the ICC. Like it or not, people are going to be spooked by this thing. And they're going to want to come in and know that your office has been cleaned. Uh, no different than when we see emergencies this week. We took all the magazines out of the waiting room. The, uh, and, and we have an open area. I hate offices that have the sliding glass thing. I hope it doesn't offend anybody. But we opened up our door from the waiting room to come in. Uh, we we quiz everybody. Have, have you been with anybody that may be infected? Have you been out of the country? The emergencies, we take their temperature right up front, uh, right before they walk back. Uh, there's only three team members with me now. Instead, of eight, they're wiping the counters down so the patient sees it. Uh, that's going to be huge. ICC, Infection Control Coordinator. That's going to be something that's going to help separate you from everybody else. And I know these are tough times, but these are the things you got to prepare now. So when you come back, your jet is with afterburners. And for those of you that used to fly like me, when you put those afterburners on, man, you take off, you move, and you're stuck in that seat. And it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. So you got to do it with jet afterburners. Sorry, I've been rambling, but somebody <laughs> called me a bit mochi with, uh, on steroids last night. <laughs> well, Bob, there was a question. Somebody wants to know what you did with that implant patient who had the implant in the sinus. What did you do with them? <laughs> First off, I got a text from the associate of the dentist that did it, who works closer with me. The guy that did it sends, I kid you, two cases a year. Yeah. For most. And, uh, and this associate's taken all these courses, but he says, Help me, I'm in a panic. My partner put an implant in the sinus and he thinks it's gonna be okay. 
And I thought, you got to be kidding me. So I said, well, I don't think it's going to be okay. And that's all I said. About 20 minutes later, this person calls me up and, uh, hey, hey, Bob, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm going to change the name. It's, it's Jim. And uh, talks like this, you got you to do me a favor. I don't know what I did. I must have hit the pedal too hard. And I saw the thing spinning. And when I tried to take the, I don't know what you call it, the drill out, it kind of broke. I couldn't find the implant. And, and, and I took an x-ray and it's in the sinus. What do I do? Can I just, I kid you not, can I push a hole in there and pull it out? My jaw dropped. And this goes on. that You can't learn how to do a root canal. You cannot learn how to do an implant, a subepithelial connective tissue graft in a weekend course or a two weekend course or a three weekend course. Now let's go back, go, go back, Bob. We are, we are, no, we're all period on us here. So what did you do with the patient? <laughs> I, I think we, we're all period on us. I think we, I think we should run a course and advertise it because I'd like to see the face on the GPs. <laughs> Come to a two weekend course of veneer preparations for the period on us. What did you do with the patient? What's so he calls me up and he says, will you see the patient? And then he says, if you could, I'd like you to do it for free because I'm a referring dentist and please tell the patient I'm a good guy and this happens. I paused and my answer was immediate. I said, no, if you want to send it to me, there is a charge and I will never put you down, but please don't do this again. And I, I was really aggressive with him and, and I said, you know, I'm probably suturing while you're making the incision. And I said, yeah. think about that. So I brought the patient in. I had to do a Caldwell luck procedure. Uh, it was pushed all the way sort of medial and distal into the sinus. Oh, so as you had to reach. Because of 3D imaging, I sort of knew where it was. Yeah. I was able to stick tweezers in and got it. Yeah. And I charged him for yeah. the repair, period. Yeah, and he paid absolutely. It. He would. And it's up to the, the dentist whether the dentist wants to pay for it. Not, and it shouldn't be on your back. Mm -hmm. Danielle, what are we doing? I mean, some of the ideas that Bob has are really good, yes, you know, in terms of are. communicating with staff yes. um, uh, and, and keeping it light. I think that's really great. Uh, maybe we can describe some of the things that we're doing with staff as well, because I, I think Bob's right on top of it. Now. Right. Well, this week, you know, we do have mostly leads in our office because there's a lot of organizing we need to do as far as planning assignments and finding out what's what's priority, what's not priority. Um, and so I have, you know, some lead people in the office this week helping get some of that under control. Starting, and we are doing meetings um, every morning, 7.15, we're doing meetings with them so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page and we're we're doing all that we're supposed to be. So I, I do love that idea. And I hope that others will start communicating with the staff because they are scared. They have no idea what's going to happen and they're, they're just worried. So I think that communication is key. And I, I love it that you're, you're doing that. And I'm kind of doing that individually right now for the last two weeks. I'm on the phone with staff constantly. You know, they have a question, they're, they're fearful, something comes up they call me and, I, and, and we're talking about it. So that I do believe is, is your first thing, take care of your staff because that's, that's, you're gonna need them when all this clears up. Um, so next week we will have more of our team in place. Um, as we have talked about on the last webinar, we were able to find out who needs what hours. A lot of our staff is taking this time off. A lot of our staff also needs the paycheck. So starting next week, I, our webinars should and will include our whole staff to sit together. Um, but we're also going to do other things in those webinars. We're going to do our OSHA training, our, our HIPAA training, our emergency protocol training. Um, we may as well get ahead on this stuff because that's what we can do together as a team remotely. So we're not all elbow to elbow in the same room. So uh, that's a good idea. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to f also find things that we can do that will help our patients get that um, security of knowing, okay, they're, they're there for us. So we are calling them all and, you know, doing a verbal, you know, we're going to be rescheduling you. Don't worry. Everything's good so that they have that. We're rebuilding our schedule. Uh, we're doing those handwritten letters to everybody on our schedule from last week when this all began till May 8th when we're ready to go back to do a handwritten letter just to just kind of touch base with them so they receive that. Um, and we also decided to do t this morning that when we do call these patients that have prepaid for this treatment and they're worried about their money, 
um, we, when we are calling them to talk to them, we're also adding, because most of our patients are seniors, they're 60 and above, to say, listen, we're here for you. Do you need groceries? Do you need something delivered to you? Because we have a whole team of staff that need things, they need things delivered. So what do you need? And then we can go to their house. You know, we can, there's a different way, many different ways you can do that. Get their list, go get their items, leave it on the porch and leave. So it's something where they can feel like, gosh, you're not just calling me saying, okay, don't forget that you have, you know, you, you know, we have this money and, you know, have your procedure. It's how can we help you during this time so that you don't get ill as well. Um, so it's, we're trying to, we're continuing to try to find ideas, which I love, love these webinars that we're doing because we can all share these great ideas. What can we do for our staff? What can we do for our patients? Because it is going to end. It is going to come back around and use this time to do something good so you can get caught up, whether it's painting, cleaning, organizing, um, implementing different structures, um, finding ways to make things more efficient when we get back, all these Dentrix paperless projects that we keep putting aside because we don't have time to do it. Do it now. Do it now. I guarantee you the handwritten letters are going to make such a difference because that's going to be different from everyone else. Right. Um, yeah, and it's, it's the price of a stamp. You'll hear some of the marketing companies saying keep on marketing now. And there's one marketing company who's suggesting that we market um, uh, dental emergencies uh, to the public, which isn't, isn't a bad idea. Uh, make sure you're staying within the definition of what an emergency is. And uh, if you haven't gone to the ADA resource, go to the ADA.org and, and find out what it is. You want to treat only emergencies. And, and what you're doing is helping the community. Do not look at it as marketing to get uh, big income in. And by the way, while we're taking out the tooth, we put in the implant. That's not the idea. But we can be of service to the community. If you're using marketing channels already, whether it's uh, – whether it's um, um, uh, Google, um, Google, Google advertising or any of, uh, or, or social media as Bob is talking about a Facebook advertising, anything, anything you're doing, um, make sure you're doing it as a service to the community. We're not, this is not the time to, uh, to talk about how we make more money during this, uh, um, during this time. Um, Bob, your idea with video is good. And I think it's, uh, something that we've talked about, uh, for a long period of time. And that is now with smartphones, the smartphone technology, as good as it is, just sit in front of your smartphone. Just do it. Pop it up on a box. Uh, mine, my case comes with a built-in stand. You see? So I can, I can hang it up. I, I can hold it up this way. Just talk into your phone and then forward it, upload it to YouTube, and send it out to your email list. We happen to keep everybody on um, Constant Contact. Uh, Constant Contacts uh, is a uh, email service. Mailchimp is another one. Robly is another one. It doesn't make any difference which one you use. If you don't have it, you can get Constant Contact for free, 30 days for free right now. Um, you can take uh, your spreadsheet and or, 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 or take your, your uh, patient uh, email list. You can easily upload it to Constant Contact, and instantly you can send out uh, an email. And we've sent out emails. Last night was an email saying, hey, I... <laughs> You know, I miss you. Here's the video, and we just uploaded the video along with it. They clicked on the clicked on the video, and all of a sudden, you're in contact with uh, with the patient with a four minute video. It doesn't have to be fancy, right? It's, you know, it doesn't. Uh, you don't have to have editing software and all the kinds of stuff that that you're used to us doing. Just do the video. The, the personal personal approach will be really good, and you know, just have a spouse, loved one, somebody in your home. Just take the video. You don't even have to prop it up. And uh, say something for one minute, two minutes, whatever it is. If you don't like it, do it again. And uh, but you'll believe me. When I start first started doing video, when I start, first started doing TV, I was self-critical of every single movement I made. And you know what? It makes no difference at all. I have ahs all over the place, ums all over the place. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's the overall message. So don't be so hypercritical of yourself. You know. You can do it. You can do it. And it'll make a big difference. Um, big, big difference to all of us. So Bob, um, you are known for the PBR, for the big, big business retreat. And so how do you would, first of all, briefly what pick business retreat retreat is, but then how we, how can you adapt it to uh, today's circumstances using Zoom or social media or however, however you're going to do it? Great question. And with your permission, I'm going to do something a speaker shouldn't do. I want to go backwards for a second on video before I answer the PBR because you hit something which is huge and it's video. I don't have time to do it here, but three years ago I came up with a brainstorm at three in the morning. I'm one of these people that doesn't sleep 
and uh, oh, you do. go to Dental Economics, put my name in, just simply look up, I think it's called the uh, Triple P DC, PIC Post Procedure Video Check. This one, what I'm going to teach you right now, and again, this is sort of what I did with my referring teams my, when I sent them a video. This is our biggest return on investment, bigger than anything else. You know, we call, you know, here's the emergency from yesterday. I get, my team gives me a call sheet. So we call the patient the night of the next morning, right after huddle. Huddle's gone. I grab my two primary assistants and myself. We grab the sheet and we grab a phone stabilizer in my iPhone. And uh, just quickly as an example, uh, Haley, it's Dr. Pick, and I'm here with part of my surgical assisting team, Goshen Sonia. And we want to make sure you're doing okay from the uh, implant surgery yesterday. Never fun to sit while you're sitting, but everything was very surgically smooth from my end. Uh, last night, I'm glad you were in very little pain when I spoke with you. Uh, as you know, my number in the office, blank, 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 is 24-7. This is the office cell, 773, blank, 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 you know, 5711. Please feel free to text me back at any time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. And we send it. You know, they, uh, when they sign their surgical consent, they sign a thing that we can send a video. So you're HIPAA compliant. And we send it at 11.30 a.m. Yeah. Just a quick note, you know, uh, uh, hi, Lee. It's Dr. Pick and team. Please see the video. We send it at 11.30 because it's near lunchtime. And if they work, they go, oh, my God, no health care provider, physician, dentist, podiatrist, chiropractor has ever done anything like that. I showed it to everybody at lunch. And I got a patient coming your way. It doesn't get better than that. It looks like this. And this was our emergency last week. I'm going to quickly read you the response. This is heartbreaking. Dear Dr. Pick, Sonia Gosha, thank you so much for your phone call and video check. No one's ever done that. I also cannot thank you enough for getting me in with my pain in these unprecedented times. God must be with me to have sent me to you all. I'm deeply touched and grateful for your care again in this challenging time. Once again, God bless you all. Stay safe. See you soon. You are the best. It doesn't get any better than that. I yeah, what's the name? What's the name of the system that you're using for that, Bob? Say it again. Is there a particular system you're using in, in order to be able to to upload the video? Is there? Are you using some what kind we, of a, a, a platform? Yeah. What we do is uh, every state is different. Please check your HIPAA compliance. All we simply do is we make sure we have the patient's uh, smartphone and we simply upload it to their smartphone number and send it. Okay. And it comes from when they sign in the office, they sign about a three page HIPAA compliance sheet with us. Uh, number 12 or 13 is uh, I authorize uh, progressive periodontics and implants to send me information either via text, email relative to my case. And uh, so when we send them, you know, uh, reminders for their appointment. This is our biggest return on investment. It's huge. You know, when you get a response like that, it's unreal. So Lee hit on something huge. And by the way, uh, I just got a text from someone that's out here. The Purple Cow comes from Seth Godin's book, The Purple Cow, about 14 years ago, a New York Times bestseller. You can read this thing in two. I like, I like to make everybody laugh in hard times. You can read this thing in two trips to the bathroom with a <laughs> very simple to do. And yeah, but there's a shortage of toilet paper now, Bob. <laughs> yeah. You better but do it yeah, all in one be, trip. <laughs> be careful with the toilet paper. Um, but uh, Seth, what Seth talks about in here is simply you got to become the purple cow. You're driving up in Wisconsin. Every cow is black and white. If you saw a purple cow in great shape, you'd slam on your brakes. You would take a picture with your iPhone especially if it had a Harvard Business Review hat on, and you'd send that picture to everybody. It'd be remarkable in an amazing way. Now, Lee hit on something huge, the PBR. In 1 million and 50 years, you never know where time takes you, and I'm gonna put a few things in perspective. We're all gonna get through this. We are, we're gonna get through it. These are unprecedented times, but it's somewhat relative, as some of you know, and uh, for those of you that have seen me recently, the last four or five years, I have to walk with a cane because I have a weakness on my right side. 
Where is it? And I got a hearing aid the size of West Texas with my cochlear implant. Cochlear, yeah. And these are all side effects of 14 months of chemotherapy and radiation that I went through in 98. All experimental, never been done on a human before. Really quick, my appendix blew on a Monday morning. Paged one of my buddies at Northwestern. I said, my appendix blew. And uh, uh, it's kind of, it, there's another funny backstory to that, but only a type A. I said to myself, I don't have time for this today. And uh, so I took my appendix out. And Wednesday, it was a Monday, Wednesday morning. Don't go back to work till Monday. Don't you pull that Penrose drain out. They told me in the recovery room, it was a tough appendix. They went through my belly button, couldn't find it, had opened me up. Five of the general surgeons were talking to me and twice the nurses came over and go, two boys, stop using the F word. There's patients up here. <laughs> when your friends work on you, it's interesting. So 505, <laughs> August 24th is a day I'll never forget. I was up on a floor at Northwestern called the Ritz Carlton floor. Just, it's a great, nice floor, uh, done well. And uh, just the, the building's torn down at this point. But I see my surgeon, uh, Kev, walk in. And uh, we had co-pathology chairman. And some of you know I did my master's in oral path at the same time. So why is pathology walking in? Ed Kaminsky, the co-chair, had become my second dad at that point. Great guy. Lost these two fingers in the Polish resistance. Those who went to Northwestern know who Ed is. He was elected to tell me what he was going to tell me. He sat on my bed. He was rubbing my head. And I could tell he was crying. And you got to have your glasses at the bottom of the nose to imitate him. And he goes, Bob, and he's rubbing my head. We are screwed. You have very aggressive adenocarcinoma of your appendix. We have never seen one this aggressive. We called MD Anderson. We called Mayo Harvard. This is way before the internet. And he goes, we think you have less than six months to live. I swear to God, I thought I was going to defecate my pants. Yeah, it went from a joke to dead serious. When you're told you're going to lose your life, that's life threatening. We're going to get through this. This to me, after being told that, I paged Al Benson, a very famous oncologist in Northwestern today, said, Al, we both got black hair and those used to know me, funny mustache. I want to be on the ethics committee with you in the 2000s. And here I am on the ethics committee with him. He saved my life with that experimental chemo and radiation. In mm -hmm. modification today, it's what's used for people to get appendix cancer to save them. I went through a lot of stuff, signed off on 41 side effects. I only got two. The hearing, they felt the chemo was going to get my cilia, nailed it five years ago. Two weeks to the day before I was lecturing a midwinter meeting in Chicago, I lost my hearing overnight. And they put this thing in. It was stitches. They activated Unreal. So I would walk with a limp, big deal. So with that, I bought out my, put things in perspective. Had a great practice partner, but just wasn't for me. Great guy, great period honest. Bought him out, goodbye. Signed a secrecy agreement with one of my mentors. Some of you may know who he is, and I hired his consultant for a year and a half. And I said, I am going to take your systems and make them better. I knew nothing about business, zero. I was the one with the name. And I realized I was in deep. And I came out of that deep shit. We became profitable, and we grow. And I developed from that what my team initially called the PBR, Pick Business Retreat. About five years ago, we changed it to the Pick Business Team Building Retreat. I'll talk about it really quick because I know we got less than 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. Two things told me it was for real. The one and only Jack Canfield from the Chicken Soup for the Soul books put it in his book last year, The Art of Success, on Chapter 8, on things you can do for your business. In 2018, in October, I published it in Dentistry Today. In that month and a half, it became the second most read article for that year at over, uh, I think, 15,000, 14,000 views. It's now number two, catching a Roger Levin article for number one. And Roger, I'm going to catch your butt. So here's what it is, and it works. And if you don't, have never done one, look up that article. You got to do one. And when my pick group coaches, one of the first things we do is we run a, a premier PBR you got to pretend you're a Fortune 500 dental business. Yes, you always do what's ethically right for the patient with right treatment. That's automatic. But you're wearing a business hat at the same time. As Lee will tell you, as Danielle will tell you, yes, we have a practice, but we're running a dental business. And way early on, 
GE wanted to get into the laser business. I remember going to a thing with Jack Welch. I'm like, who's Jack Welch? And uh, he's rolling his grave today that GE's not an S&P 500 company. But I started going to these retreats of these big companies and I started taking their agendas. And I said, they're doing something right. I'm going to do it. I will never forget being in Kohler up in Wisconsin. A lot of you have Kohler faucets. I wish I had an iPhone back then. Above the urinal in the men's room was a framed mission, vision, and culture statement of Kohler. It was framed above every urinal. It was framed in the toilet. I asked somebody if it was in the ladies' room, and they went, yes. So how important is that mission, vision, and culture statement to Kohler? They want you to read it. When you're going to the bathroom, today they probably go preserve toilet paper. Do you have a mission, vision, culture statement? If you don't, this is the time to do it. Do it a PBR with a Zoom, and I'll be more than happy to coach you through it. If you don't have a mission, vision, culture statement, how do you or your team know where you're going? You don't. You've got to develop in business what's called they can wait, a USP, unique selling proposition. It's your brand. Yeah. What do you as a periodontist do better than any other periodontist in a purple cow wow way? And by the way, uh, what do you do different from any other dentist is what I'm going to say. <laughs> me? No. <laughs> we are not competing with periodontists. We are competing with the general population. And True. let's understand yeah. that periodontists are just one of a group of dentists. And uh, those of you who follow me know exactly what I'm talking about. And well. Even Bob came around to my way of thinking. <laughs> if, if you haven't seen it, Lee, you got to send the link. He did two YouTube videos, which is great. And I used one of them on my Facebook. And it's like, you know, I, I forgot how he says it. This is Lee Sheldon. And, you know, if you're not seeing a specialist, why? We have three years of training. Three years versus three days or something, right? Is that yeah, how you, you, said it? you can take a three-day three day implant course when I give my lecture. It's... Uh, you know, I give my lecture. I, we give a dental implant lecture once a month. And so, uh, it's essentially, well, you know, I think this is, there's said, a secret you don't know. You know, you have heart surgery, you go to heart, uh, cardiac surgeon, you know that he's trained or she's trained. She's been credentialed by the hospital. The only people who can go and operate in the hospital are people who have gone through a credentials committee where all of their training and all of the experience is evaluated. You know what? Dentistry is not that way at all. I can do a three-day course and do dental implants. And then I look at my <coughs> associate and I said, yeah, and he, um, he took three years. <laughs> he became, he became a periodontist and uh, did graduate level training. It took him three years. Must be something wrong with him if it took him that long to learn how to do a dental implant. <laughs> if you haven't seen his YouTube videos and that, you got to see them. They're spot on. Either use it, mm -hmm. put it on your own Facebook page, or make your own. It was perfect. Or make I your own. It. Don't use mine. Use. There are a lot of people who use mine, and I feel really good about that. I love being a, an international uh, star. But no, that's not the idea. It's your face, not my face, that makes a difference. <laughs> I mean, your second, face, not your second, face. Your face. <laughs> the second you came out with that. I not only rolled off the chair, I showed it to every one of my team members. I'm like, spot on, spot on, spot on. <laughs> By the way, the other thing that you do in this big business team building retreat, <clears throat> something had I not, it, it, without getting the Harvard Business Review, I would not know something called the stew. And if it wasn't for some of my mentors and taking business classes, I wouldn't know about something called the SWAT. At every PBR done biannually, Ours are now two days for the last maybe 10 years. You start out at a day. You do something called the business SWAT and STU. SWAT stands for strength, weakness, opportunity, threats. When you're at the meeting, you get one of these big sticky boards. Someone comes up, they're assigned to write strength. So strengths, right line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You do a round robin. Uh, you know, uh, Vanessa, give me our first strength. Sonia, give me the second. Diana, give me the third. Gosha, give me the fourth. Goes on like that. Strengths come from inside and they're important. You got to take your strengths and make them stronger. You then do W weaknesses. Somebody writes weaknesses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Round robin. Weaknesses come from inside, but they're not good. You want to take your weaknesses and make them stronger. 
and delegate people to help you do that. Delegate, Dennis, delegate. O, opportunities. Opportunities can be big. Again, opportunities, write them down. Round Robin, what can be opportunities for us? What a perfect opportunity now to talk with staff about what are our opportunities. Rather than dwelling on where we are right now, forward. Okay, I mean, that's hope. That's not just hope. That's planning for, for the future. Yep, you took the words out of my mouth. Yes, opportunities. Opportunities are positive. They come from inside, outside. T stands for threats. What are the threats? Threats are not good. They come from the outside. Uh, your competition is opening up in the same building. I, I, Aspen Dental is opening up next door. I have no idea. But take threats, get, ignore them. And then STU is a huge one. STU stands for S, satisfy the customer or the patient. E stand, uh, T stands for team, huge. My team are so important to me. And then E goes extra mile. W, put the wow factor in all that you do and during a PBR there's unbelievably fun team building event something called the snake look it up it's fun everybody laughs so hard they pee their pants and we do videos we do people have to report on articles I start off the day you know what's going on my office manager does an office manager's departmental report my hygienist do a hygiene department report assistant report, my office rep extraordinaire report, and then it goes on and on and on and on. There's assignments during the day, all kinds of things. And then if I can find it here, if you get really comfortable with yourself, have your team do a personal swap and sit back and bite your lips and don't defend it. And I personally carry around my, I had, about three years ago, I had my team do a personal swap and I carry around my weaknesses. It's the big sticky thing here. And I knew exactly what was coming before it came. And number one is time management. And I'm getting better with that all the time. Uh, follow through and procrastination, impatient, ADD, listening. And I knew this, but I look at it all the time. I carry it around with me. And by doing that, I can get better. And so, and if there's so much more, but this is what goes on at a PBR. And if you've never done one, you gotta do it. You can either do it right now while you're away from the office, set up a Zoom conference with everybody. Yeah. Up my article. Zoom is so fantastic and it's not broken down once. This is an opportunity. It is. It is. It's huge. If you have any questions, Dr. Pick at thepickgroup.com, I'll answer them for you. I'm here to help. I want all of us that are specialists to kick some butt. No kidding. It's about time. We got to do it. This is the time to take a shitty thing and make it big in a purple cow wow way. Period. It's fantastic, Bob. Very, very, not only inspiring, but practical. We got some questions, okay? Actually, we have one question and uh, and some nice compliments, which is nice. So here's the question. I'll give it to Danielle first, Bob second, and chances are Danielle will probably say what I'm going to say anyway, okay? So here's the question. I was thinking about dropping insurance and no longer taking assignment. Would you hold off on that for a while? Drop insurance. <laughs> 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 okay, so you're saying drop. I'm going to give you a different answer, but go ahead, Bob. What do you think? What do you say? If you're taking insurance right now. Would you? Um, and you think you're no longer taking assignment? Would you hold off on that for a while? I, you cut out for a second. No longer taking what? And the question is: I was thinking about dropping insurance and no longer taking assignment. Would you hold off on that for a while? Hold up. What? I feel I'm missing something on uh, your first. Uh, Give, give me the question again. I feel bad. Okay. I was, you're that's fine. I was thinking about dropping insurance <laughs> and no longer taking assignments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would right. you hold off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why this thing's a pain in the butt every once in a blue moon. This thing clicks, and I'm like, God, I missed one word. Um, <laughs> boy, don't do it now. Yeah. Do not do it now, in my opinion. Now is not when you make a change because you may hurt yourself. And 
whoever it is, I commend you for dropping insurance. I personally have been fee for service from day one and my, it, it, for a thousand reasons. And all my mentors were fee for service. Um, uh, don't do it now, please, because you'll hurt yourself. But once you get back to where you were, then that's a great time to slowly start dropping it. Just don't make it fall off. Well, let's, let's take this PPO and let's pull that one out and we'll do that. And you got to do all the things that you do in a fee for service practice. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget maybe 91, two, remember talking to referring dentist and he's like, are, are you taking all these new insurances coming out? PPOs and stuff. And I'm like, Nope. And he goes, well, why aren't you? I'm like, cause not my thing. And so it's interesting. I said, why are you? And he goes, because my competition's doing it. If every dentist went on strike for a week and didn't take insurance, not only would the news get a hold of it, but it would probably be a better scenario. And let's face it, the insurance companies are there to make money big time. A lot of them have 18 whole golf courses. Yeah. I think, you know, and that's what Danielle was driving at. Frankly, we should all be going in the direction of dropping mm -hmm. insurance um, for all of the reasons that Bob says, and, Danielle knows that well, Bob and I essentially practice the same way. We never took insurance. So I, oh, wait a minute. I shouldn't say that. I tried Delta Dental for six months, and it took me another 18 months to get off their list. And once I experienced that, then I said, why? Why would I ever want to do that? And the answer is, if you're in insurance right now, you're not going to change your business model now. This is not the time to change your business model because you don't know what business model you're going to. We're hoping that we're all going to be doing fantastically right away, but we don't know that. And so right now, as Bob says, um, we, want to, we, we want to stay where we are right now. But if you look at where Danielle is coming from, uh, it's essentially the same position as Bob. Um, once you have gotten all of the skills necessary, and I got to say that first, you don't just drop something without adopting something else. And so you need the communication skills, you need the marketing skills, you need the public relations skills, you need to hire people who are going to help you with that, both internally and externally, and I'm not, I'm not pushing myself for that, but we're not a bad place to go. Um, but we're, we're, we're not looking for that, but you've got to understand there's a number of different skills that you build, and once you build those skills, you find out that the 25 or 35% discount that you're taking by taking an insurance patient along with the dedication the insurance patient has versus the fee-for-service patient, you find out that you can spend a lot less money doing the marketing and having the team that you need to be able to deliver fantastic service to, to your patients. And then once you, once you have that and you built that, then the insurance falls away because you don't have to you don't have to worry about that. Oh, that's just a, a nuisance. I don't need that anymore because I built this part of it. Uh, that much. And you get those skills from people uh, who have done it in within our profession. And frankly, you do exactly what Bob's done, Bob has done. Uh, you go outside the profession to see what business management is really all about. Um, and it isn't just dental business management. Basic business management is basic business management. I don't care whether you run a restaurant or whether, you, whether you're uh, running a, a periodontal practice. Same thing. I, boy, I, I I couldn't have said it any better, and it is so true. And two things went through my mind. All of us in dental school can relate to something that nobody else can relate to. And I don't care if you're Danielle, uh, my Diana, but unless you've been told you got loose enamel rods on your prep and go back and re-wax it, it's crazy. What we go through in dental school is insane. Yeah. And I'll never forget doing my residency and I was doing my anesthesia rotation. He had a really tough intubation and the attending goes, can you see me in the morning? And I'm like, oh God, he's going to make me reintubate 10 times or, uh, you know, he goes, wow, I took a look. I had no idea you were a dental resident. That was a really tough case. I'd like to spend five minutes with you showing how do you make it better? I was mm -hmm. like, wow, what a difference in, in, in education. We work too hard get paid what insurance pays us, in my opinion. And uh, every month, we sometimes have a patient that calls in, finds out we're not on the plan. We try to have the verbal skills to keep them, but they don't want to come in, that's fine. I'd rather not have them. Uh, I'd rather get paid 
well for what we do. We do an amazing service as periodontists. We're unreal as periodontists and implant specialists. And to what insurance pays us is all for the benefit of the insurance company and of nobody else, period. Okay, our buddy from Chicago, you know Gennady, don't you? For Cell yeah. Life? Sure. So Gennady asked this question. First, he says, I, we appreciate all of you, and we've gotten some nice compliments, and, and thank you. And, Bob, you, you received some great compliments here. Um, what, are the, what are the two top uh, key takeaways that you have for all of us, Bob? Two things. One, I didn't even mention, is make sure. I want you to sit back and think about this. Do you have the right team? I discover so many clinicians do not have the right team. And do you have somebody like a Danielle, like my Diana? And I call them the five-star purple cow wow team. Say that fast five times. I, can't. And I want all of my team members to have something. Again, look it up in dentistry today. It's called the HQ, Hospitality Quotient. I want all my team members to have 49% skill uh, and 51% HQ, hospitality quotient. I want every one of my team members to have a natural wiring inside that makes that patient feel special mm -hmm. That's when they good. in my office. Right. So they say, Dr. Sheldon's my favorite. Dr. Pick is my favorite. Dr. Harrington is my favorite. Dr. Franz is my favorite. HQ. So do you sit back? Do you have the right team? Second biggest takeaway is we are living in unprecedented times, period. But we have something like this called social media. Please use it to your advantage. Get together with your team before you come back. How are we going to come back? How are we going to do it? How are we going to reach out to the referral teams, our patients? Are we coming live on Facebook? Are we doing all the things that we should be doing to make us better than anybody else and to stick out in a purple cow wow way? And I'm going to give you number three, and that's what happens when you talk to a Bitmoji on steroids, is this is a tough time for all of us, and I know some of you are having a tough time, but when you get through this, please prepare for something like this in the future. Save, put six to nine months of money away for personal and practice overhead, and there's many ways to do it. Something I use is called capital. Q -A -P -I Q -A -P -I -T -A -L. It's a app. You can get a card where you're an interest. And long story short, I have it. You can change the settings. Every time I go to the store and I use my debit card, I like keeping my credit cards at zero. Uh, it rounds it up to, if I have a dollar fifty purchase, it rounds it up to the next dollar, takes 50 cents, and automatically puts it away and invests it where I want it to go. So subconsciously, I save money. And when all this happened, I looked at my capital account. I looked in my safe. I looked at, I have certain stock things that are for the team. Uh, it was down, but it's still a ton of money. So please save for six to nine months for a rainy day. Because money does not buy you health, I know. But it buys freedom. And freedom is huge in tough times. So please use this to get together with your team. Make sure you communicate with your referring team so you're the purple cow when we come through this. And please listen to Lee. What he is doing uh, is absolutely uh, unprecedented in these tough times. He's got Danielle with him. What a support team. Uh, we're kicking butt, and I love it. That's right. And I want to leave you all with three quotes, which are huge. One, from the one good old-fashioned John Wooden. If you don't have gray hair and know who he is, look him up. UCLA coach, unbelievable. He used to say, make every day your masterpiece. And that stuck with me a long time ago when he, I heard him say it. Make every day a masterpiece. Two of my own quotes, which are huge. Image coupled with a strong performance like Lee is unstoppable. Think of Michael Jordan. Think of Tony Robbins. Image coupled with a strong performance is unstoppable. Finally, dream big. Always shoot for another solar system. And if you land on Saturn, that's okay meaning we all dream to get across the street. You only get two feet. Dream five miles down, you're going to get across the street. So dream to shoot off the charts. If you land on top, it's okay. Love everybody. Uh, Lee and Danielle, thank you for having me out here. Thank you. Uh, here to help everybody.
Bob Pick, Dr. Robert Pick, he's in Chicago. He will also help you. So contact him if um, if you want some help. Thanks for joining us all, Danielle. Thank you for thank you for your for 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 everything that you do. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, those of you who, um, who want to register for the AAP uh, 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 webinar, um, that will be at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for Bob, it's 1 p.m. Central. Uh, <laughs> 11 a.m. Pacific. That'll be Friday, tomorrow, Friday. Um, and uh, Dr. Brian France uh, and Dr. Uh, Chris Richardson, along with Danielle and I, will be all together talking about the tools the AAP is providing. Um, if you want to register for that, just go to AAP Connect. Those of you AAP members, I, most of you are, go to AAP Connect and you'll be able to register for that program. If you don't know or if you can't get on there for some reason, just email me at the email address. You got for Zoom, um, uh, which is probably, I don't even know which one it is. Uh, but Lee at directorofdentistry.com will get you there. I'll send you the link so that you can get on uh, to tomorrow's program as well. Uh, again, thanks to our guests, Dr. Bob Pick, Danielle Samella, and we'll see you again soon. This is Michael Jordan, and he says to kick some butt. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> I'll, I'll call you right back. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>